what I have to say, y'all can all take this interview and do whatever you want to do with it. I'm coming to speak, not on just my behalf, but all athletes' behalf, that when you guys do interviews, y'all should respect athletes more. Y'all should understand them coming from whether they're winning, whether they're losing, whatever the case may be. Athletes deserve way more respect than when y'all just come and throw cameras into their faces. Understand how an athlete operates and then ask your questions then be more understanding of the fact that they are still human no matter just the fact of y'all just trying to get something to put out in an article to make a dollar thank you as a community i feel that we should all be embarrassed by the way that we as a community responded to shakari richardson's public trauma shakari is an athlete shakari is a very young black woman and at the time when she was gaining the most attention ever in her life, her biological mother died. And she was given this information, we're talking a mere hours before one of the biggest moments in her life. And she still won. And she still not only beat a record, set a new record for all other athletes. And how we as a community have responded to the reasons that she was disqualified from participating in the Olympics and how we have continued to perpetuate the very same behaviors that we all say we hate and our response to her very public trauma is embarrassing. Now, Shakari is someone who I wanted to speak about on the channel for quite some time because I get this feeling every time I think about her and her experience that quite honestly makes me so disappointed in us as a Black community. We say that we want to see more regular Black girls. We say we want to see more Black women embracing themselves for who they are, what you know, whatever it may be, from their hair to their skin to their nails to their orientation to their gender identity to all of those things. We say we want to see Black women who fully embrace themselves in that and, you know, don't feel they have to do anything to change that to fit into a narrative. The minute that we have all first saw Shakari hop on the scene, Everybody wanted to praise her for her appearance because she was so loudly and boldly pushing back against how a runner is supposed to look. We haven't seen someone look like Shakari in a very long time since Flojo. And please do not let it be lost on you that many of the other black women runners we see coming up right now are dressing and looking the way that they are because they feel confident enough to do so because they have a contemporary who has already done it and has reached the heights. Let me just tell you my personal thoughts. First things first, I don't care if Shakari ever qualifies for the Olympics again. I don't. I don't care if she ever wins a gold medal. I don't care if she ever comes in first again. The only thing that I care the most about is seeing the community to which she belongs, which is the community of black athletes, and more specific, the community of runners, of track and field athletes. I want to see that community embracing her. And I feel that what I've seen from that community, be it Allison Felix, um, be it Usain Bolt, we're talking about two other black people, top of the top in this field, not supporting this young woman at the time of when she went through these traumatic events and continuing to not support her now. Now, everybody can sit here and talk about a rule is a rule, a this is a that, but let us all be honest. We all know that it had absolutely nothing to do about the rule being the rule because so many other non-Black athletes have still been allowed to compete or keep their titles and keep their rewards even after they have been found to have not been in compliance of all of the rules. So we're not going to even, and I'm not going to have that conversation about Shakari broke the rules. I don't care about the rules. The rules break themselves every day. The rules are rewritten every single day for the people that those who 
wrote the rules decide the rules can be broken for. So we're not going to have the Shakari broke the rules conversation. That conversation is tired and is dumb. And if you're a black person who wants to sit down and talk about Shakari broke the rules, guess what? You're a part of the problem and I don't want to have a conversation with you. And I say it just like that because Shakari Richardson had to go through one of the most horrific things a person can possibly go through in their lives. And she still showed up for y'all. Yes, she showed up for herself. And yes, she showed up on behalf of her mother. But she also showed up for y'all. And y'all have the audacity and the nerve to turn your backs on her. Especially those of you who are in the track and field community. I think it's embarrassing. I think it's embarrassing that as a community, the black track and field community, especially those who have reached the heights that Shakari has gotten to, I really think it's an embarrassment that those who belong to that community did not rally around this young woman. Fine. If y'all really do want to talk about she broke the rules, whatever. Okay. If you're one of the other top track and field stars and you were black, one of the first things you should have been doing was trying to get on the phone with this young woman. One of the first things y'all should have been doing was trying to fly her out to wherever y'all are at and have her come train with y'all. Have her come heal. Go talk to her. Go talk to her. How did Kanye West get to Shakari Richardson before Usain Bolt did? Where are our priorities? And I'm not even going to get into the politics of Kanye West. And I still listen to his music, so we all hypocrites, right? But my my point is, how did Kanye West, somebody who is not a track and field star, somebody who isn't really into that world, you know what I'm saying? How did he get in contact with this young woman and embrace her before anybody else did? How did he get her on the phone to talk to her before anybody else did? How did he make sure that she was receiving some type of compensation for showing up for us before anybody else did, before those that belong in the community that she's a member of, a chosen member of, a skilled member of? No matter how y'all feel, she was the fastest woman in the world. And because she was, it means she could always be that again. Somebody has to always hold the record, right? So whoever holds it now, holds it now. Not forever. They hold it now. And she's incredibly young. Let's just talk about the life cycle of a track and field star right quick, right? It's often not very long, which is why someone like Allison Felix is, I mean, incredible for all that she's achieved and for how long she's been able to maintain her career. But Shakari is only 22 years old. She can absolutely go to the Olympics at 26, 25, 26, given her birthday, and dominate and win. She has so much time to continue to dominate in track and field. But that's not the biggest thing here. We all know she's talented. We all know she's a great athlete. We all know that she has the potential because we saw her do it. We watched her become the fastest woman in the world with her own eyeballs. So we know that she's capable of it. But what we also know as a black community, what we also know as a track and field community, is that she's gone through something that you have to spend your entire life recovering from. And that is the loss of a parent, a parent to which she was close to, a parent to whom which she loved, right? We're not talking about an absent parent. We're not talking about a distant parent. We're not talking about an abusive parent. We're talking about her mother to whom which she loved, okay? Her mother. That happened when this young lady was 19 years old, 19 going on 20. That is traumatic. That is life-changing. You know what trauma does to the brain? Do you know what trauma does to the brain and to the body? And the fact that the black track and field community finds it appropriate for anybody to make fun of this young woman for how she is responding to one of the most horrific things that have happened in her life is ridiculously 
embarrassing and shameful. And I'm really, really, really tired of us as a community thinking these kind of things are funny. I know Shakari is outspoken. I know Shakari can talk a lot of smack. I know Shakari can talk a lot of junk. We know that's a part of her facade, right? That's a part of her personality. That's a part of her her character. All athletes, let's just be honest about it. All athletes do have a character that they embrace because that's how they get themselves through. You ever been an athlete? I've been an athlete before, a figure skater. You put on a persona once you step into the arena of your sport. You do because I don't, it's just the nature of being an athlete. It's the nature of sport. And for years, for years. Now, am I going to sit here and say everything Shakari says is okay and fine and dandy? No, but who am I to judge? What I am here to say is, I don't understand how people are acting like Shakari is just some belligerent, um, smack talking athlete who has nothing to show for what she's saying. First of all, Shakari can back up everything she says with her talent, with her talent. And I know recently she hasn't been performing at her best. But again, can we take a look at what's been happening to this young woman? Can we look? Imagine you are part of this community, track and field. You're one of the best. Forget the rankings. Forget all, because how many years have we watched Serena and Venus, no matter their rankings, get dogged in how they were being discussed by their own communities? And each of them individually have talked about how that has impacted them as athletes, mentally. So that impacts your performance. So if we look at the times, look, if we look at the timelines, look at the timelines when Venus and Serena may not have had their best years, still won a bunch of things, still broke the records, but it wasn't really a great, you know, competitive year for them. Let's look at what was being said about them. Let's look at how other people in their community, yes, the black community, yes, the black tennis community, and yes, the greater, broader tennis community and the greater broader athlete community let's see what was getting said about them around those times and then it starts to make sense then it starts to make sense so if people are talking about shakari horrifically and horribly it would make sense that she's not going to perform as well as she possibly could this isn't making an excuse for her she is an athlete i have been an athlete (laughs) So it's not to make an excuse because regardless of what's getting said about you, regardless of what people are treating you, you do have to perform. Not not for everybody else, but for yourself. But my my biggest thing here, because I'm going to bring it back around full circle, Shakari showed up for us. She had already gotten so far. So many little black girls, so many little black boys, so many little black children, so many grown black folks have been so inspired that if she had said, I can't do, I just, I cannot do it. I cannot do it because of what has happened. She would have been well within her right to do so, but she didn't because she saw that and she decided I would like to still show up for them and compete. And she dominated. And she became the fastest woman in the world for that year. And so I think it is incredible, incredible that she achieved that. And what makes me so sad as a black person, as a black woman, being a member of this community is watching us not uplift her. And let's not pretend like immediately after Everyone found out why she had been disqualified, that the discussion quickly shifted from. Um, She's been experiencing a trauma to, oh, she broke a rule. That's how quick y'all turned on her. You, 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 forget the media. Forget the media. Forget the white people. Don't tell me what Susie and them said. You, you, black people. You black women, you black track and field athletes, you, 
You, you, general, overall, track and field community, y'all, y'all turned on her that quickly. And ever since, ever since have been engaging in this like parasitic relationship with her where y'all just want to suck her dry. Y'all want to see her shrivel up like a, y'all want to see her collapse. And I think it's disgusting. I think it's terrible because the one thing that we can all say confidently about Shakari is from the moment that she has stepped on the scene, she's always been very outspoken, not only for herself, but for other athletes. And the only time when Shakari has gone from being more of maybe possibly a team player is when she started to be quite literally attacked, when it became a marketing tool to talk badly about her because other athletes did it. Other black female track and field athletes talked badly about Shakari as a marketing tool on and off the field. That's horrendous. That's horrific. That's what we're doing to each other as a community. That's what we all said is okay. And there's all these videos on the internet. There's all, there's all these pop that channels talking about this young woman as if she's not a human being. I would love to go see one of y'all get up and become the fastest person in the world after your beloved parent dies suddenly, unexpectedly. Because if y'all can do that, no complaints. Okay, fine. Then maybe you have some critique to give. But unless you can do that, you yourself can do that, then I don't know what criticism you have for this young woman's response to one of the ultimate traumas in life. She is 22 years young. 22. In older black women, in older black men, are cheering on the tearing down of this young black woman who has achieved things that 99.9% of y'all won't physically. Forget money. Forget fame and fortune. Just the body. You know the discipline it takes to get your body in such shape that it can achieve things that she's achieved? That's why track and field is such a a mystical sport because it's like for your body to reach these top speeds is almost unfathomable. Like, how does a human body do this? But it can. So she already has to push herself to those limits physically just to do what she does. And then she has to push herself mentally. And then you have your community, your track and field community, your athlete community beating you up every day over some rule you broke about three years ago that is not even a rule for real that anybody actually cares about and honors because they let non-black athletes get away with it all the time. So y'all don't care about the rule. There's something else about Shakari that bothers y'all. And you know what it is? She doesn't mind to be honest about who she is. But y'all do. Y'all care. Y'all care about actually showing up as who y'all really are on the field. And off it. She doesn't. She doesn't care about that. Because she likes to run. She likes track and field. She likes being an athlete. She likes to inspire in that way. That's her gift. That is her healing for herself and for us. She showed up for us on that day, but every day since we have not shown up for her. And I think that's an embarrassing thing. I don't take anything of what gets said about Shakira Richardson by other athletes lightly. I don't think it's funny. I think it's a joke because as 
cocky and outspoken as she was coming up and when she was just on her winning streak, she was not talking down about other athletes. Now, she would talk smack, but talking smack and then like literally speaking down on another athlete are two different things. Shakira didn't speak down on other athletes. Shakira didn't put other athletes down. She talked a little playful junk here and there, but she wasn't putting them down, right? She wasn't putting them down. She wasn't reinforcing the idea that they are no good. She didn't do that. That wasn't a part of what she did. She's very much against that. She's only just started to possibly start teetering that line of talking down about people because what do y'all expect a person to do when you cast stones at them like that? What? No, like, let me be honest. I really was, I don't, after we all knew why Shakira would not be going on to the Olympics, we all found out what had happened just hours before she made that decision to, quote unquote, break this rule. I was expecting an outpouring of love and support just in her healing, just in her healing from other black track and field athletes. I was really expecting them to get up and rally around her. I was expecting there to be an outpouring of calls to her. I was expecting people to be tweeting her, you know, hey, I just DM'd you my number. Hey, I got my team emailing your team. You know, let me know when you can talk. Let me know when you can chat. I would love to host you here um, at my rehab place so we can work on our bodies together. You know, a lot of athletes tend to rehab together after they compete to get their bodies back in peak strength. You know, I was expecting things like that. I didn't see none of that. And that was shock. That was shocking to me. We didn't see any of these larger black track and field athletes come and swoop her up to make sure she was okay. I'll give you an example of what that looks like. Megan Thee Stallion and Beyonce and Jay-Z. That's an example of two people who are in the same community that you are in coming in, swooping you up, and standing by you when you go through a trauma. Regardless of how you might have responded to that trauma, because we all respond to it differently, but it doesn't, how you respond to trauma doesn't negate the trauma you've experienced. When Megan Stallion lost her mother, right? She became an orphan. And then she experienced more loss. Beyonce and Jay-Z quite literally swooped in and took her in. Because they know that Megan is in a part of their community, which is the music industry. And they knew how easy it would be for someone such as herself to get caught up in things she would have no business being caught up in if she didn't have people watching over her, swooping her in, guiding her, helping her. After the person who really was doing that for her passed on. And granted, other things transpired. But even since these other things transpired for Megan, Jay-Z and Beyonce have always stood beside her. They have always stood beside her and they've always been very outspoken about their support of her because they know just how easy it is for someone like Megan Thee Stallion to quickly, to quickly make a wrong turn. Now she can get back on track, but 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 making that wrong turn can, can take you 10 years to get back on track. And I fear what is happening with Sha'Carri Richardson is that A couple of wrong turns are being made because she's 22 years young. And those that have been in her position just as an athlete alone, not the trauma, but just as athletes alone, are not doing their due diligence. And yes, I am going to call it a responsibility. Their responsibility of making sure she doesn't go down those paths, making sure she doesn't take those wrong turns. I'm going to be honest with y'all. 
I'm gonna be honest with y'all. Um, I'm an older track and field athlete, right? And I've I've experienced the success Shakira has experienced. Even if even if she wanted to get on the TV screen and talk some junk about me, I would still reach out. And I can say that because I've been somebody in the position where a person has not been speaking about me too kindly, but I was privy of information of things that they had gone through and things that were happening in the background. So I understood that although they might be talking about me and they're using me, you know, as their subject, I am not the intended subject. I am not the intended target. The target is their pain. The target is their suffering. The target is the confusion that they're experiencing, right? Um, so even if I was some of the athletes that feel that Shakari is now not, you know, whatever, paying her dues to them. Let's be... She paid her dues when she became the fastest woman in the world that year. That's point blank, period. Dues paid. Thank you. <laughs> Done. Conversation closed. Dues paid. But... Even if I even if I felt like, oh, she kinda she kinda talking that mess, she talking that smack. She's talking that mess about me. I would still I would still reach out. I would still reach out. You know why? Because I'm at my big age. You know what I'm saying? Like and she's not. And the trauma that she's experienced is public. It's not no secret. It's public. We all watched it happen. And now we know that if we know all of this information publicly, oh my goodness, what could be going on privately? What could be happening privately? And I haven't seen any sort of community mobilization around making sure that Shikari is protected, making sure that she knows that she has a community in the track and field community, in the black track and field community, and in the greater athletic community. I don't, I'm not seeing that. I'm not seeing that. And I, and I really dislike seeing, um, articles and stuff written about her that are like, oh, Sha'Carri Richardson is causing her own downfall. No, she's not. She's being failed by her own community. She's not causing her own downfall. She's being failed. And I really dislike when y'all go, well, she's grown. She's an adult. She's 22. I don't give a hoot or nanner if she was 42. She's being failed by her community. That's what's happening. She's being failed by her community. She's being failed by black women. She's being failed by black men. She's being failed by the black track and field community. She's being failed by the greater track and field community. She's being failed by the greater athletic community. She's being failed. We're failing her, y'all. We are really failing her. And those who are in position to really reach out to her, I mean, really touch her on the shoulder and sit her down and rehabilitate her spirit, and rehabilitate her mental and rehabilitate her body are not doing it. And I and that's where we fall short as a greater community at times. That's where we fall short. People like to buy into that. I don't owe nobody nothing. You owe yourself. <laughs> you owe yourself honesty. So if you as a person who sits in position to really be able to grab to carry on the shoulder and be like, hey, are you okay? No, like, talk to me. Forget all the other stuff. I don't want to hear about none of that. If I said something about you that was sideways, I genuinely apologize about that. I was going through my own pain and suffering, but I'm so serious. Girl, are you all right? Are you good? Because we could train together. We can pray together. We can make our meals together. We can get our hair done together. We can go, whatever you need to feel like you have community, I will extend. I will extend a hand. I will. And then it can go from there. Now she says she don't want it. She don't want it. That's fine. But has anybody done that? Has anybody done Because we know nobody's done it publicly. I can tell you that much. We know nobody has, has really offered that hand publicly except Kanye West. Which, again, I ask y'all, how did Kanye West, how did Kanye West, <laughs> how did Kanye West get to Sha'Carri before y'all? How did Drake get to Sha'Carri before y'all? Are you kidding me? And then we go, protect black women, protect young black girls. Who are y'all letting uh, be around her? Hmm? Who are y'all letting get her ear? Hmm? Hmm? 
because it's the young black woman that we all know does not have her mother anymore. Hmm? Hmm, okay. All right. So if that's how we want to operate out of the community, it's an embarrassing thing. It is. Are you not embarrassed? Is it not embarrassing? Like, as a community, are we not tired? (sighs) Are we not tired of only having discussions about why that person's bad and why this person... Can we start working on rehabbing each other? Hmm? Because when you rehabilitate somebody else, you also rehabilitate yourself through the process. So as a community, can we start working on rehabilitating ourselves, individuals, and rehabilitating as a group and as a collective? Because right now, if we continue this trend on how we're treating Shakari Richardson, I don't know where we'll see Shakari Richardson in five years, ten years. I feel strongly that she has a deep desire to continue competing and to continue being an athlete, a professional athlete at that. And I have no doubt in my mind that if she wants to continue on that path, she'll be incredibly successful at it, even going all the way to the Olympics and continuing to dominate. I have no doubt in my mind. But what is uh, a little frightening is we all know what happens when people bully people, right? The way that a person can be bullied when they have such visibility as Carrie Richardson does. Hmm. Dennis, oh, y'all got to care about people when they're here. You know, don't say that. All those tweets start rolling in, but didn't you just make fun of her when she was here? And that's what's frightening to me. That's what I'm not as confident as saying that I, I'm sure that won't happen. I cannot confidently say that that is not a possibility because of the way that we are behaving as a community. And to the greater athletic community, too, y'all is really acting very bummy and very shady and very corny right now when it comes to Shakari Richardson. She's 22. Duh, she gonna be cocky. Duh, she gonna be outspoken. Duh, she gonna say some things that's a little out of pocket. But at the end of the day, this very public traumatic thing happened and transpired. The media handled it atrociously, disgustingly. Oh, my God. Y'all re-traumatized that girl every day. Y'all are gross. Y'all are horrible. The media handled it horrifically. She should not have even found out that her mother had passed away in that way. Like, y'all are disgusting. Y'all are gross for how y'all did that. Horrible. Absolute fiendish. Yeah. Horrific. That's what y'all are. Anyway. Um... But it's like, with all that information, all that public information, you would, you would think... Okay, this is the time we really rally around somebody as community. This is the time that we say, we don't care what, what, what they talking about with their rules. We don't care what they saying about their policies. Ah, 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 ah. We're not trying to hear all of that. All that we're trying to do is make sure that this young woman gets back to what she was and even better. Because she deserves that. She deserves that because she stepped out on there and showed up for us. Yes, she does. Yes, she does. She deserves to be cared about. She deserves to be supported. She deserves to be heard. She deserves to be rehabbed. She deserves to be back in the fold. Y'all are trying to push her out. I see y'all, mm, weirdos. Y'all are trying to push her out. Y'all are trying, y'all are trying to push your Carrie Richardson out. Y'all are trying to make her undesirable. Y'all are trying to make her the, the antithesis to what it means to be a good track and field star. Mm-mm, boo, tomatoes, tomatoes. Y'all are boring. Y'all suck. Y'all are terrible. Boo, 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 boo. Why would you do that? Why would you do that? Why would you do that? She's the fastest woman in the world. Why would why 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 would you do that? She held that record and held that title. Why would you do that to her? Cause if you really think about it, if you really think about where Shakari Richardson is right now, her tone, how she speaks, her cadence, her athleticism, all that stuff. If y'all really think about it, is it fair? Nah. Mm -mm. And y'all got to stop saying people are just all responsible for themselves. No, y'all are responsible for the horrific, nasty, terrible things y'all said. Y'all are responsible for that energy y'all putting on that girl. Y'all think the energy is not going to, who, baby? Watch your energy. Watch y'all's energy. Watch y'all's energy. And that's why I said, like, she might have came on the scene cocky and loud or whatever, but she was never talking bad about folks. She didn't do that. 
there was a very clear, like she had a very clear distinction on like how far she would go and her, her, you know, quote unquote trash talk. She ain't never going to talk down nobody though. You know, she wasn't going to like really beat and punch down on people. But people are encouraged to punch down on her. Other athletes. And they do it. They do it. Other black women. Track and field stars. Get on their own Instagram lives. And make fun of this young girl. That's 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 twisted. Y'all don't think that's twisted? Y'all don't think that's kind of perverse? Y'all don't think that's kind of scary? Really? Do we see other... Mm, okay. Because when I hit y'all with that, then y'all be like, well, they don't... But uh, And here we are trying to have conversations about how we can stay on code. Babe, we can't even support a young black woman who found out her mother had passed away literally hours before she went to compete in one of the biggest competitions of her life because the media, yes, a white news media outlet at that, told her that to be nasty and spiteful. And they still succeeded in getting us to turn against her. Y'all are embarrassing right now. Like, this is sad. Like, it would almost be funny if it wasn't so sad. Because it's like, how do y'all keep falling for this? (laughs) How do y'all keep falling for this tactic? Oh my god. How do y'all keep falling for this tactic by them? How do we keep going for the okie doke? No, seriously. Like, how did y'all really let them mind play you into thinking Shakari is the bad guy. What? Because if you think about it, everybody's vitriol for Shakari Richardson came after what? After what? After y'all found out that she had a puff to deal with her trauma. Y'all gotta be kidding me. Y'all are funny, man. Y'all are sad. Like, y'all are funny, but it's sad. It's sad. This should, at this point, we shouldn't even be having certain conversations about Shakira Richardson, but we still are. And that's what's crazy to me. Like, why y'all still talking about this woman like that? Like, why? I thought we were over that. Can we just let her continue to compete? And da da da, and da da da. And then, I, and then you know, some of y'all's argument would be, well, if she would stop talking, she gonna stop when y'all stop. Because she didn't start till y'all started. Do y'all not see that? No, like if you, cause I was, I was really following her career. I like sports, y'all. Um, if you really was following her career like that, she didn't get started until y'all got started with that mess. That's why she really speaks the way she does now, cause y'all started with her, and she has every right to defend herself. Are you crazy? Are you mad? You're being unserious. Be serious right now. Of course, she's gonna defend herself when y'all come at her crazy wishing horrific things on her of course of course of course she gonna clap back of course of course you know it's really something else it's really something else it's really something else it is that as a collective we cannot just stand together with this young woman no, because we, let's talk about it. What is there to be upset about with Shakari Richardson? What? 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 Y'all didn't care. Let me see something. When she was talking all that smack and all that junk and all that whatever, y'all didn't have nothing to say about that. Y'all had nothing to say about that until they until they disqualified her. Then all of a sudden, she's bad guy, top guy number one. Y'all are a trip, boy. I hope we get it together soon, cause this is this is this is embarrassing. This is a trip. This is this is really something else. This is really. Y'all have got to get it together. Y'all have got. Y'all have got to get it together. Y'all have got to get it together because it's it's, it's just like. It's just it's like. <sighs> they can still trick y'all. That's what it is. They can still trick you. They can still trick y'all. They can still trick you. They can trick you. And y'all all all got tricked and thinking she's the bad guy. They're the bad guys. We should have all been turning on them and being like, whoa, hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. We did not. Not enough of us. And don't don't talk to me about the two tweets you saw. Who We did not in mass. Other black 
and track field athletes did not in mass flood to her support and were like, hey, 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 Olympic committee, that's crazy. Hey, 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 what about these 70,000 freaking cases of non-black athletes who got to get away with much more with this very same rule? Hey, hey, hey. Y'all didn't do that. Because y'all was too worried about, y'all was too worried about having, (laughs) am I going to say, y'all was too worried about having their attention on y'all. Sad. That's terrible. That's terrible. That is. That's very terrible. Those of you who were waiting in the wings for your quote unquote chance didn't say anything, didn't didn't speak up about nothing because y'all wanted the eyes on y'all when it was quote unquote your turn. Is that how you want to get y'all turns? Failing one of us is how you want to get your turn? That's crazy, boy. That's really wild. It's crazy. Um, I could go on honestly for three thousand hours about Shakira Richardson because I really think um, this is one of our largest mistakes as a black community. I do like in in in, in recent modern times how we are handling this. I, I do. Um, is it the most important of all of our? No, but <laughs> is it? One that is quite important? Absolutely yes. Absolutely yes. Absolutely yes. Um, And I think it's just really tragic that it's been like three years and um, y'all are still so fake divided on her. Like, shut up. Shut up. Y'all not divided about nothing. You've been tricked, swindled, bamboozled, hoodwinked. You went for the okie doke. And y'all look silly. Y'all look silly. It's just something. You know, shout out to all the athletes, though. Shout out to all the athletes. Um, Jamaica's big ups doing this thing, you know what I'm saying? Top boy in it. <laughs> uh, doing y'all's thing. I see y'all. Very great. But also, don't talk down about others. All right? Um, y'all, stay blessed. Stay beautiful. Stay happy. And... Remember to always interrogate your feelings before you even get ready to say, this is why this is bad. Ask yourself, why do I feel that that's bad? And once you identify why you feel that that's bad, ask yourself, well, when did I develop that that was even like bad? Like, when did I develop that that belief? Because how do you know? Hmm? All righty. That's all I got for y'all today. Um, I really... I'm not going to say I want to see her win because she's already won. But I want to see her embraced. I do. Um, We have to stop being so fickle with each other because they don't like us, (laughs) y'all. That's just the fact of the matter. They don't like us. So please, we have to stop. Mm -hmm. Stop being so fickle. (laughs) No, it's true.